everybody and welcome to Penelope Possum's channel. It's your boy, Penelope Blossom the Possum. And, as you may or may not know, two things. It's Spooky Scary Saturdays and we're going to watch some spooky videos. I remember we got a suggestion to watch something about the Nakalavi. So, I guess let's... Look into a video about those. Maybe we'll find the top left one. Okay. There's a bug. Oh. Bumped my mic. Rosie, I saw your tail. Yeah. Uh, let's also look up. Let's look up the, uh, creep, the, uh, SCP file one. I remember a really good one. Orc. Lady. In. Horseman. Uh, we've got a few different options from the Volga and Dr. Bob, SCP Explained, The Rubber, Mythology and Fiction Explained. Dr. Bob? Alright, we love Dr. Bob. It's 1916. Right in the middle of World War I, and a British soldier is huddled in a trench, occasionally peeking over the top. Okay. He's supposed to be on watch, but there's little to see in the darkness that hangs over no man's land. But then, he spots something. Something big. It's a shadowy figure, only about 20 feet away, and it looks right. like it's digging in the mud. It's too dark to make out what he's looking at, so the soldier shoots a flare into the sky lighting up the battlefield with a dull red light. Now he can see it clearly, and it's like nothing he's ever seen before. A huge, terrifying monster, picking up bodies out of the mud. The soldier can only stare, petrified by what he's seeing in front of him, when the creature suddenly turns to stare back at him, and smiles. Blech. Hi, that is I'm not Dr. A Bob, nice smile. and this is SCP-3456, also known as the Orcadian Horseman. Right. SCP-3456 is the designation given to a group of quadrupeds, of which the exact number that exists is unknown. These entities resemble horses, though with some marked differences. SCP-3456s lack any hair, and their thick skin is translucent, revealing the fat and muscle underneath. They have three-toed hooves, and strangest of all, they have one or more human-shaped torsos fused to their backs. Each torso has a pair of arms and a head, but no legs, the torso seeming to meld directly into the back of the creature's horse-like body. The arms are much longer than those of a human, with a total wingspan that is double the anomaly's height. The arms are so long, they typically drag along the ground when the creature moves. At the end of each arm are five sharpened bones that protrude from where fingers would normally be. Instead of a nose, most instances of SCP-3456 have a hole in the middle of the face, which is capable of producing a high-pitched scream that is as loud as a jet engine. SCP-3456 instances I vary in size, like the with the horse. largest recorded manifestation standing 30 meters tall and 15 meters long. Their bodies have also shown to be quite resilient and are completely impervious to conventional weaponry. The anomalous creatures have displayed a high level of adaptive intelligence using complex tactics like setting up ambushes through the use of property destruction and psychological manipulation to lure targets into traps. This high level of intelligence has led many at the Foundation to believe that SCP-3456 is sapient. Any direct observation of an SCP-3456 instance 
will cause the entity to become aware of its observer, at which point it will display this awareness by turning in the exact direction yeah. of the observer. Once an instance of SCP-3456 has spotted its observer, it will engage in predatory behavior, stalking its witness and pursuing them far beyond the initial site of manifestation, all the while concealing itself and using camouflage as it chases them. Oh, that's not good. SCP-3456 will repeat this behavior over and over, intentionally letting itself be seen by observers over and over as it hunts down and takes each one until it has captured a large number of individuals and suddenly dematerializes. It's currently unknown where SCP-3456 takes its victims or what happens to them once it dematerializes, nor is it known how many victims 3456 needs to capture before it is satisfied and dematerializes for good, as the number taken has varied between instances. It's not currently understood why, but SCP-3456 is either unwilling or unable to cross bodies of fresh water. And making it to the other side of a fresh water source like a river, lake, or even a stream is the only currently known way to escape the anomaly once it begins its pursuit. Instances of SCP-3456 typically appear near sites of mass human suffering, such as battlefields and natural or man-made disasters and there have been numerous reports and sightings of 3456s at historical events throughout the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries, with multiple manifestations often appearing at the same event. One Foundation report contains an account of an SCP-3456 instance appearing during the First World War at the Battle of the Somme. Rumors spread through the British troops in their trenches of the appearance of a mythical creature many believed to be the Nukalavi, a horse-like demon with origins in Orcadian mythology. Like many SCPs, this ancient folktale turned out to have very real origins. British infantryman Dave Harkind kept a journal which described giant hoof prints appearing in the battlefield mud and soldiers disappearing under mysterious circumstances, appearing to be killed by forces even more terrifying than what the war could produce. Harkened describes one soldier who was firing on advancing Germans when the mud beneath his feet started boiling. Before anyone could react, mud went flying everywhere, and everyone was knocked off their feet. The soldier was gone, not even a body part remained, and Harkened was sure he saw bony protrusions reaching up out of the mud underneath the soldier just before he disappeared. Not long after, Harkened spotted the Orcadian horsemen on the battlefield, and the horsemen spotted Harkened. He watched as the instance of SCP-3456 picked bodies out of the mud and carried them off into the darkness. He took several shots at the entity with his rifle, but the bullets had no effect. As days passed, the half-man, half-horse continued to appear night after night, always doing the same thing, picking up injured soldiers off the battlefield and taking them into the darkness. It would always look back at Harkand, seemingly taunting him or inviting him to try following it. Soon, more instances of SCP-3456 appeared, many with more than one torso on their back. And then they began laying traps, burying themselves in the mud and waiting for the soldiers to rush over them. Dave Harkand was declared missing in action at the Battle of the Somme, and it's presumed he was taken by the same instance of SCP-3456 that he first observed. Another first-hand account of an encounter with SCP-3456 occurred following the 2011 earthquake and subsequent nuclear disaster in Fukushima, Japan. With over 2,500 missing persons, several manifestations of SCP-3456 were reported in the areas affected by the quake, and SCP Foundation reconnaissance teams were sent to investigate two of which were quickly wiped out during the encounters with 3456s. One squad, after exploring the evacuated city and not finding anything, spotted an instance of SCP-3456 standing motionless in the middle of an intersection. Yeah. As they laid eyes on the Orcadian horseman, the human torso that was hanging limp off the motionless horse's body stood upright and began swinging its arms, damaging and destroying the buildings and structures around it. It then turned towards the team and emitted an ear-shatteringly loud shriek from the hole where its nose should be before beginning its pursuit. The team immediately began evacuation procedures, even ordering a drone strike in an attempt to slow down the chasing anomaly. 
The team took shelter in an abandoned high-rise building, but knew their only chance of escape was if they could make it over the nearest body of fresh water, which would mean crossing a bridge over the Arakawa River, which was a kilometer away. The team was 50 yards away from the bridge with no further signs of SCP-3456 when one emerged from a side street right next to them. Small arms fire was used against the creature and two rocket-propelled grenades were fired at it, but all had no effect. A flashbang detonated in the anomaly's face bought enough time for some of the squad to make it across the bridge and escape. But two members of the team were carried away by SCP-3456, with the last image captured by one of the squad's helmet-mounted cams being a shot of the Orcadian horseman smiling just before it demanifested. SCP-3456 is currently uncontained, and due to its extremely dangerous nature and the lack of any containment procedures, it has been designated Keter class. Any personnel who observe the entity are to be treated with Class G amnestics, and their assigned treatment facility must be located within one kilometer of a body of fresh water. The Foundation has an ongoing project to attribute any historical references to SCP-3456 to myth, shell shock, hysteria, or PTSD, and any reports of loss of life or property damage involving the anomaly are to be replaced with explanations that attribute the cause to other natural or man-made events. Regions where SCP-3456 is more likely to appear are to be closely monitored with personnel ready to assist in evacuation efforts. But above all else, direct observation of SCP-3456 must be avoided, since once that has happened, there's very little even the SCP Foundation can do to protect you. Yeah, now go and watch great. another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, and be sure to subscribe as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. All right, cool. I was about 14 when one night I was walking back from my best friend's house. It was a cold winter and the bike path was extremely icy. It was about half past nine, so the area was deserted. I got about halfway along the path when this old man riding a rickety bike rode straight past me. He looked like he was around 85, so I was a bit confused when I saw him. He rode up along the path and kept going. The path split in two directions and he continued along the first. My house was on the second. I watched him take the turn up the first path and I got onto the second. Again, it was just me and the sound of my footsteps. Now, this is where it got already. freaking scary. A loud sound of a bike bell came from behind me. Turning back, I saw it was the same old man and he was following me on his bike. I'll never forget his face. I can see it now. The way he stared. Cloudy but focused eyes locked on me like I was the only thing in existence. I increased my pace and it kept following. Once I walked up to my porch, the old man watched me while sitting on his bike from the other side of the road. The fact that he now knows my address gave me a sleepless night. But as he hadn't done anything to harm me yet, I ignored the matter. The next morning, Never it. I was doing my workouts in my dad's garage when I heard the sound of a shutter click. I quickly looked back but saw no one in the empty streets. I resumed my workouts when I there heard There you are, you creep. <laughs> I had never turned my head so fast in my entire life. It was him, the creepy old man who followed me home last night. What the hell? What are you doing here? No, 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 don't be afraid of me. I just wanted to say hi to such a beautiful girl. Here, I brought these for you. He took out a small bouquet of roses and held them to my face. His wide eyes stared at me accompanied by a huge grin. I wanted to say no, but then thought if i just take the flowers, he'd go away. So, I did. As soon as I took the flowers, he took out his phone. You sure are sweaty. You don't want to get heat stroke. You might want to take your shirt off. What? No! Get lost! He started getting close to me and giggling in a very freaky way. I screamed at the top of my lungs and pushed it. Ow. He stumbled on the ground and I ran inside to call my parents. By the time I was back with them, 
the old man had vanished into thin air. My parents had installed shaky, a CCTV bro? camera in the garage through which they saw the footage of the man approaching me. I was strictly told not to wander alone and the next time I see him I should call 911. The next day, I got invited to a sleepover at my friend's house. There were three of us staying that night. When my dad dropped me at Kathy's, my eyes took a quick scan of the area. I heard a bike bell and got goosebumps, but when I saw it was just a boy passing by, I heaved a sigh of relief. Is everything alright? Yeah, don't worry dad. Alright, Good night, kiddo. You Actually, have fun with your dad friends, I'll pick you up in the morning, okay? Good night, dad. See you tomorrow. I stood outside Kathy's house watching my dad drive away. I remained there for a few more minutes. Something at the back of my mind kept giving me a bad feeling. I was looking around with terrified eyes, thinking I would see that old man any minute. Then yep. Kathy patted me on the back. Hey, what are you waiting for? Trixie has already arrived. Jeez! You scared me! Yes, you Whoa, should be worried. You look tense, dude. Are you okay? Let's go. We went in and I filled my friends in about that guy. Darn, what a creep. If he came near me, I would have kicked him in the nuts. My friends kind Always of blamed a good, good me fan. saying that if I hadn't taken the flowers from him, things wouldn't have escalated that far. But I was only a teen who was just starting to learn about the dangers of the world. I had enough talking about the creeper, so I suggested to my friends we should do something fun. That's when Kathy said, Hey, want to go to the basement and try Dad's drinks? Really? You want a drink? Yeah, why not? Mom and Dad are at the neighbors across the street. Bad they won't idea. be back before midnight. Now, the basement of Kathy's house was a little different than ours. There was a big window close by the stairs from where we could see outside. Kathy and Trixie started drinking while I stood on the stairs looking outside that window. It was quite dark so I could barely see anything. As I leaned on the glass to get a good look, a flash of light blinded me. It took a few seconds for my eyes to adjust. Outside the window was a face. The face of an old man plastered against the glass. Uh, of course. His eyes were staring back at me. There was an unending hunger in them. The fact that he was looking back at me from the other side of the window made me numb with fear. My suspicion had come true. The creep had followed me to my friend's house as well. Another flash of light appeared as he took my picture on his phone. Seeing the light coming from the window and me staring like a statue, Kathy got up to see. As she came in front of the window, no she screamed doubt. at the top Creepy. of her lungs. <laughs> Loud running footsteps pounded outside and I fainted. All of our parents went straight to the cops that night, but the old man couldn't be identified or found. I haven't That's seen him weird. after that, and I would always get anxious whenever I was around old people for a long time. Even today, when my son meets a stranger, I keep a strict eye on him. It only takes a few seconds to get traumatized for life these days. The story you just saw is based on this terrifying footage. The footage serves as a reminder on why you should never leave your kids outside. The following clip shows a young girl simply trying to enjoy her day when a freaky old man appears from the streets after noticing her working out in her garage. At first, the old man hides in the corner and takes out his phone. He starts recording her very sneakily. Then, he walks inside the garage holding flowers. He pretends to be friendly and offers the girl the flowers. You can see the girl hesitating and stepping back at first, but being innocent, she ends up taking the flowers. It's possible that she thought the man will go away if she took the flowers, but the man goes up being even creepier after oh, a few gosh. seconds. He takes out Poor his phone girl. and asks the girl if he could take her pictures. Thankfully, the girl sees the red flag and pushes the man onto the ground. She screams and then kicks the old man running inside her house. The man doesn't stay any longer and quickly gets up to run. There's no news on the man getting caught, but hope the girl never had to see him again. Yeah, I hope so. This I'm never going to be friendly to the new kid again. It's not like they're a bad person, it's just something about them makes my skin crawl. All the kids at school gave him a wide berth and avoided Ugh. him like the plague, but I tried to be like nice, at least to start with. I mean, why wouldn't you be nice to the new guy? I've been a new guy before and I know how it feels. Or I thought I did. Hey, David. You're really cool. Thanks, man. You too. I hope you had a good first day. I did. Thanks. 
Say, I, I was wondering, do you want to come have a sleepover at my house? Yeah, Ew, sure, why not? You're gonna regret I didn't want that. to. Heck, it wasn't like he was my friend or anything, but I still felt slightly obligated to be friendly to him, and so I decided to go along with it. The few minutes of school left passed quickly, Good. and I was soon on my bike and headed over to the address he had given me. When I arrived at his place, it was all kinds of wrong. There were yeah, busted no. windows bad, and broken furniture littering the lawn, and none of the lights were working despite it being nighttime. Still, I wanted to give him a chance, so I went in anyway. Once inside, everything seemed okay, if a little different from what I was used to. Strange paintings hung on the walls, and there oh, wasn't much in terms no. of furniture, but we managed to make ourselves comfortable enough by playing video games together, until eventually we decided to go to bed. One thing that Dude, was weird, however, bolted. was that I hadn't met his parents. They didn't seem to be anywhere. I couldn't help but be curious, and so I decided to ask him why. David looked away from me. They're out right now. A, a party. Oh, I, I get it. Cool. I didn't get it, but I figured he had his own reasons. Maybe his parents were drunk and he didn't want to talk about it. We both got ready for bed and eventually fell asleep. Or at least I did. I'm not sure if he ever did. I woke up in the middle of the night, a weird feeling making me stir from my dreams. I didn't know what made me you? wake up, but when I cracked my eyes open, I saw David standing there with a pipe raised above his head oh. and an unsettling glint Look, in his eyes. Unusual. He was just standing there, grinning wider and wider as he watched me. I laid motionless, my breath stuck in my throat, terrified at what he was going to do next. What made it even worse was his appearance. He might have been short and slightly chubby, yeah, but his broad arms and hands were raised sky high with the pipe. His eyes had wrinkles on wrinkles beneath them, and his small mouth quivered with excitement. His fat folds jiggled beneath his clothes as he shifted slightly. After what felt like an eternity, he finally dropped the pipe and began to draw something on a drawing board I hadn't noticed before. I could only make out some of the details in the low light, but it looked like he was drawing a man and a woman, with both of them looking not so alive at the moment. Suddenly, however, he began drawing a third character. This was when I realized exactly what he was drawing. The third character stood above the other two, holding what was clearly a pipe. He was drawing a picture of himself and what he had done to his parents. My heart was racing, and the room started to spin as I tried to think of a way out of this situation. I was about to you move when I realized he had situation. noticed as well. He quickly wiped the drawing board off and turned toward me again, grabbing his pipe. I inched Ball, my fingers run, toward no, my phone, bad, 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 to bad. speak. You're not going to be able to call your parents, David. I'll do to them what I did to mine. What do you mean? That's Why bad. Why are you awake? Run. I tried to play innocent, but he wasn't buying it. I saw you stirring while I drew my picture. You saw it, didn't you? The fear crept up my spine. He lunged forward and grabbed my arm, dragging no, no, me no, away no, from no, the door. No, no. He dropped me to the ground, then quickly bolted out the door, locking it behind him. I heard him mumble something about making this quick, as he scrambled to lock the windows as well. That's when it hit me. He was going to off me. He yeah. would have been gone. How Just did it like make his you parents. that long? I started to panic, but I also knew this was my only chance. I had to make it out alive. I ran to Break the window. The window. I Run. could hear myself struggling to find something outside, presumably something to silence me with, but I was already pushing the window open. I heard it creak and crack as it moved, but I pushed through and started to climb out. Once outside, I ran as fast as I could. Good. The streets were empty, save for the occasional car or two. I heard a scream of anger behind me, and I turned around, watching as he ran from the house, his pipe held high. But I Call didn't stop running. I kept cop. running until I reached the safety of my parents' house. The police came soon after I made it home. Good. They said they found evidence that David had been living on his own since his parents had gone missing, but there was no proof that he had gotten rid of them. That's when I realized how lucky I had been to escape from David's house alive. The worst part about this, though, is that because the police couldn't find any evidence, he's not going to jail. Luckily for me, he'll have to transfer since he'll be sent to an adoption agency. What's Good. creeping me out, however, is that on the day he left, someone slid a letter into my parents' mailbox oh, with a boy. note scribbled on it. If you want to meet my parents so badly, I can help. 
It freaks me out to think that sometime in the future, he might just escape the adoption agency and come back here for revenge. <gasps> Kitty! It happened three years ago. My best friend Ashley and I attended a music school during the summer. We met this strange, skinny-looking girl named Elena. She was very close to Ashley. So she invited the two of us over Yikes! to her place for a sleepover. Her face looks like mashed potatoes. Dad, Mr. Van Buten came to pick us up from school. He was an unusually hideous looking man. No. His head was balding and swollen. His legs short and stubby. His pale skin was quite hairy. And he had warts all over his face and body. Yeah. Just one look at him made me want to gouge my eyes out. I felt uneasy as he drove. I would often catch glimpses dead. of his small beady eyes gawking at me through the rear view mirror. Oh, this he guy's also crazy. made these heavy breathing noises, like he was gasping for breath. Things became even more unsettling when he started saying creepy things like, You girls smell very nice. Ah, I don't know. I love no. teenage girls. I wish I could have a hundred more daughters like Elena. Finally, uh, when we got to Elena's house, no, we went into her don't. room and changed into our pajamas. We played truth or dare, pillow fights, and other fun sleepover games. Admittedly, I was having a blast, but I, I couldn't got shake the feeling hands. that we were being watched. I often noticed her dad's beady eyes in the dark as he peered at us through the space in her bedroom door. Uh. After a while, Elena left the room to get us both some soda to drink. I tried confiding in Ashley. Hey, I'm a little uncomfortable. I think something's wrong with Elena's dad. I think he's been watching us. Yeah, I noticed that too. But it's just one night. We'll leave first thing tomorrow morning. If Her you words survive. calmed me somewhat. But little did I know things were about to get worse. Much worse. Yep. I'm back with the soda. Elena brought Don't us a drink soda it. bottle each. It was a strange green colored drink that I had literally never heard of before. I also noticed that the seals of the bottle caps had been tampered with. Don't drink it! Finally, I'm so thirsty. Ashley gulped down the whole bottle in a heartbeat. I, on the other hand, left mine for later. Um, I gotta go to the bathroom. Sure, there's one just down the hall. I made my way toward the bathroom. Her the hallway was very dark and gloomy. Aside from the eerie ticking noise of the old grandfather clock downstairs, everywhere was silent. Suddenly, I heard some muttering sounds and muffled crying coming from the ceiling. My blood froze. Yeah, there. And my her ears teeth became hot as I tried to trace the source of the sound. It seemed to be coming from the attic. I inched closer to the attic door overhead. It had a long cord attached to it. For a moment, that's where he my keeps paranoid little mind girls entertained the stole. thought of pulling the cord and opening the door to the attic. Suddenly, Elena's dad appeared out of nowhere. Uh, he Susan. looks like a poo on his, his sinister, head. throaty voice made my skin crawl. I could feel the hair on the back of my neck stand on end. Good evening, Mr. Van Buten. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I stuttered. What's the matter, Susan? Why aren't you with the others? Oh, I was looking for the bathroom, but I got a little lost. Oh, it's just down the hall. Let me know if you need any help getting there. Thank you, Mr. Van Buten. No, I will be fine. I walked away from him as quickly as I could. I'd make sure to he, lock that door. On the other hand, didn't move an inch. He just stood there, staring creepily as I walked into the bathroom. Luckily, he was gone by the time I was done. I walked back to the room, and we watched a movie together. After that, we all went to sleep. I drifted off on a roll-up mattress, but I couldn't get much sleep because of how spooked out I was. Suddenly, I heard the thud of heavy footsteps close by, followed by bursts of heavy breathing. It sounded so close, I could almost feel it on my skin. I opened my eyes, and the footsteps quickly hurried away. Elena was no longer in the room, and Ashley was fast asleep. Ashley, there were drugs in wake that up. soda. I pushed and nudged, but she didn't budge. She was so knocked out that an explosion could go off, and she wouldn't even notice. Just then, 
I spotted red flickers of light beeping from within Elena's wardrobe. I opened the wardrobe, and to my shock, I found a portable hidden camera in there. It was recording everything that was going on in the room. What the hell is going on? Before I could pry any further, I heard sobs and whispers again. It was coming from the attic, but now it was louder than before, emboldened. I went straight for the attic door and pulled down the stairs. Slowly, I walked up the attic. The stairs creaked with every step I took. I was petrified by what I found up there. Young girls, each one about my age, all dressed in white and tied up. There were at least six of them. Each was so bony and lanky that they probably hadn't eaten in days. Oh god! What is this? They begged me to free them. Some even asked me to take their lives. Just then, Mr. Van Buten emerged from the shadows. Call 911! Ah, Susan. I see you're eager to join the others. No worries. I asked Elena to help me bring a white dress that'll fit you like a fiddle. In an instant, I slipped past him and tumbled down the attic stairs. I ran back into the room and tried to wake yeah, Ashley absolutely up. absolutely screwed Ashley, up. wake up! Wake the hell up! I shoved and pushed, but no dice. Try all you want! She's not going anywhere, and neither are you! He inched towards me, desperate. I opened the bedroom window and jumped out to the yard below, limping and crying. I ran as fast as I could until I was able to hitch a ride to my house. When I got home, I told my dad all that happened. Good. The next day, we went back to the house with the police, but found no one there. Oh, bad. Ashley was gone, too. All we found were creepy recordings of all the girls who had come to the house for sleepovers. It's been three years since then, and there's still been no sign of Ashley. I'm just glad I was able to escape that madhouse, but I'm so deeply saddened that my friend wasn't so lucky. She probably dead. Holy cow. See, there are times I wish I got invited to some, like, more sleepovers and parties when I was younger. But it's things like this that make me infinitely grateful I wasn't. Yeah. Moral of the story, kids. Sometimes not having friends is good. It saves you from things like that. The Burger King one? Uh, this one? Oof. It's a little long. So far, the kind of horror stories I have seen had a few things in common. The victim, in most cases, happens to be alone and everything happens during the day. But what if I tell you that the story I'm about to share terrified the living crap out of me in broad daylight? That too, in public. I work at Burger King. Yes, it's my full-time job. I dropped out of college and moved out because my attic parents, who fought like animals under one roof, Generally, after all that traumatic childhood, you feel nothing can shock you anymore, but let me tell you, you are wrong. So wrong. It was a busy Wednesday afternoon. The restaurant was running in full swing. Customers were getting takeaways or eating with their close ones. I have just finished serving five tables simultaneously. Hey, I'm going for a smoke. Okay, I got you, Rosie. I went to the back of the restaurant. I was standing beside the dumpster smoking and observing cars drive by bad and people for you. walking on the street. When I suddenly noticed our manager sitting on the opposite sidewalk and moving back and forth in a crazy way. 
I zoomed in with my back camera just when she looked at me. Her eyes were closed. Ugh. She had a smile on her face. That is an ugly Whoa. woman. That's creepy. She then got up and started her crossing nose. the road oh, with her what? eyes closed. Her smile got bigger every Make time she Pinocchio made a horrible Dallas. run over. Kitty? I couldn't watch it anymore. Kitty, I ran Kitty. inside to talk to our employees about this. Just when she started banging the restaurant door like a maniac. I'll break you! I'll finish you! You can't escape me! Devil the woman. entire place broke into chaos as we all watched our manager damaging like her own property shoe, and it's violent really rage. Me off. She looked furious and mentally unstable. Like, look at her nose. Tell me that doesn't look like a clown's shoe. This is a clown shoe nose. I'm not wrong. <laughs> she gonna go. Ear, ear. Oh wait. Ah. Uh. I have a clown horn, but I, I don't have it on me. I'll have it next time. But Able from she the way she go. behaved. The kids started crying out of panic. Frickin'. Everyone was so shocked to see a random stranger behave like that, they forgot to do anything. Suddenly, one man standing close to the door tried to calm the woman down. Oh, bad idea. Miss, miss, what are you doing? Please tell me what is your problem? I don't want to hear anything! She just kept screaming and banging on the door. The door was already broken and hung in its last few breaths when the man tried to stop her and the woman slapped him out of the blue. Wow. Don't interrupt me! Hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? She on drugs or something. One of our employees charged her. Immediately, a few others went along. Donna? Donna! What are you... Stay away from me! The man who just got slapped lost his head and pushed the Donna away. Realizing the man is stronger than her, she calmed down. But instead of leaving, she walked right in. And you boy, know what she looks like? She, entered, she looks like a character from Courage the Cowardly her hand Dog. In the air and started making a whooshing sound from her mouth. She constantly did this and pushed some invisible energy towards the man like she was trying some mind control trick on him. Oh my god, we need to call the cops. This yeah. man is crazy. Yeah. She's trying some black magic thingy. Freak, I'll call the owner now. My fellow employee Riley rushed to the other corner and I dialed 911. Once she got in, she started bizarrely moving her hands, like she was casting a spell on everyone inside the restaurant. This made all the customers scream and back off from her. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? She jumped on the counter and started stomping on it with her feet. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain, and the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. Her eyes popped out like evil. The way Donna screamed, spitting all over us, was a sight I'll never forget. And suddenly, she jumped on the other side of the counter, running straight to the kitchen. Our chefs moved away from her path in fear, and she walked straight to Riley, who was sitting at a table talking to the owner. Before we all knew it, she jumped on her and grabbed her shirt. Then she took her face extremely close to her and started growling at her like a wild animal. We do not need an extreme close up of Riley the inside of this screaming, woman's nose. But Donna oh didn't let her go. Oh Instead, she started shaking her violently and screaming at her like a possessed woman. She started slapping and punching her. Riley's shout for help made two men rush to the woman. It was impossible to separate her. The men even couldn't do it. I am going to crush you like a spider, you filthy woman! Donna yes. ripped Riley's clothes, giving her trauma for a lifetime. Now, I couldn't watch it anymore. What I is dropped wrong my phone her? and jumped on them. Seeing my step up, all the women employees came to Riley's rescue. We understood that men are not going to be able to raise their hands at her, so if anything needs to be done now, must come from the girl gang. 
As we all jumped on Donna and grabbed her, she slowly let go of Riley, but kept throwing punches and kicks. She even spat at us, but we didn't let her go. Now that she was trapped, she stopped pushing it. Don't touch me! Don't! Leave me, okay? We let her go, but guarded her so she couldn't harm anyone anymore. When the cops came and arrested her, she started crying. Please, let me go home. I haven't slept for a long time. My mind is going crazy. I can... I can hear the voices in my head 24-7. They just won't stop talking, please. The restaurant got taken over by her relative and she never came back. All we got to know from workplace gossip is that her husband cheated on her with some woman and it made Donna go crazy. I mean, I'm still working here and I hope I get to see Donna. I don't advocate for cheating, but in this case, I think we can give the guy a slight pass because Donna's a uh, not very pretty, but at the same time, he shouldn't have married her in the first place if he was just going to do that. She was scary, but that's no reason to like... It, there, there's no, yeah, clown shoe knows, but like, there's no reason for him to have cheated on her. He could have just had the marriage annulled or something. There, there are steps you can take. Donna again, but divorce. Don't happy, cheat. Yeah. Peaceful person, Donna, if you're watching this. I hope you're getting the help you need. Take care. I hope so too. The story you just saw is based on this true footage shot at a Burger King outlet. The day was going like usual when suddenly the manager of the outlet snapped out and started behaving like crazy. She began damaging the restaurant in complete rage and when a customer tried to stop her, she slapped him. The manager then Itchy. moved on with her vile insults and weird behavior. Wow, and even it's so a Burger scary King how, employee. like, close. Her insanity like, carried on until the cops showed up and calmed her down. Obviously, but... The reason of such outbursts is still unknown, but it terrifies to witness how a perfectly normal human being being turned into a deranged madwoman that no one saw coming. To anyone out there, it's never a good idea to walk alone at night. No. Nope. And it's never a good idea to accept a stranger's offer of a walk. Yeah. I know this now, but two years ago, as I strolled through the park, I didn't think that anything could go wrong. I was enjoying the tranquility of the park when suddenly, I saw something ahead of me in the shadows. At first, I thought it might be nothing more than a stray animal, but as I drew closer, I began to make out what appeared to be a man. I grew nervous, chills running down my spine. Something about the way he was walking made me uncomfortable. But suddenly, he walked under a lamppost and a grin spread across my face. I knew this man. He was the father of one of my good friends, Lucy. And we'd There's all spent in many afternoons room. in the park together. I put my previous fear aside and began to walk toward him again. It looks like a bat. My fear replaced with relief. Hey, Mr. Castro. It's me, Clarissa. Clarissa! It's been so long since we've seen each other. How you been? How are your parents? His polite inquiries were comforting and my fears from before began to subside. We continued to walk together, engaging in pleasant conversation and reminiscing on our past family adventures. I relaxed as we continued to walk, enjoying the late night air. Despite this, the conversation soon took a turn for the worse and began to make me feel uncomfortable. So Clarissa, are you seeing anyone special yet? You know, I'm always willing to give advice. <laughs> he licked his lips and leered at me. Thanks, but I'll pass. Well, it's your loss. Come, let me show you something. The implication no. clear. I had forgotten my previous fear as I hesitantly followed him down a dark alley. His grip on my arm tightening as he led me forward. We eventually came to a stop and I looked around in confusion. Not sure why we were there. Suddenly, his hands were on my shoulders, pushing me up against the wall. 
His lips were on my neck and I instinctively recoiled, screaming for help. Help! Somebody, please help me! Shut up! It's too late! Nobody is out right now! Stop struggling or I'll hurt you! He began to tie me up and I knew that if I didn't get free soon, this would be the end for me. With a burst of strength, I managed to break free and ran towards the park as fast as I could. I could hear him cursing behind me. I hid in a bush, my heart pounding as I tried to remain silent. I could hear him storming around, his footsteps thudding as he ran. Clarissa, come back! I just want to talk! He began rummaging through the bushes directly next to the public bathroom in the park. I whimpered, trying my best to stay hidden. All he had to do was look through the bushes I was hiding in, and I was finished. I stayed hidden, though. He was right next to me, and I clamped my hands over my mouth, trying my best not to move. I could see him from my hiding place in the bush. His wild and scraggly hair hung limply from his balding head, his weird eyes greenish in the moonlight. The black dots in the center of his eyes darted to and fro, Pupil. trying to find me. His hulking form stood looming over the park, like an omen of death. He walked off, but I could still hear him shouting out my- Okay, girls, guys, people, don't go out at night alone. If you do, have a weapon. Something long range. If you're scared to have, like, a gun or something, have- pepper spray, a stick, an umbrella, anything that you can hit someone from a distance with. None of those little spiky keys or stabby knuckle things. Because that just gives your pursuer a chance to grab you. If you have long hair, make sure it's up in a hairstyle that's difficult to grab. If you have short hair, you're fine. And worst case scenario, you are grabbed. Fight like absolute holy hell. Scream, kick, bite. Gun, pepper spray, taser, yeah. Like, scream, kick, bite, spit, whatever you can do. To fight against the person who's holding you? Do it. Like twist and turn and everything. Also, your car keys are not an effective weapon against an attacker. My name and calling for me to come out. Clarissa! Clarissa! Don't go out. It grew quiet and I knew he had gone for now. I crawled out from my hiding place and ran to my car, quickly getting inside and driving home. When I arrived at my house, however, I saw something that made me sick. Out front of my heart, a hulking figure stood, his eyes wild as he stared into my windows. The hair was unmistakable, and I knew in an instant that it was Castro. I cursed myself now for inviting him and his daughter over to my house before. He knew where I lived. Backing my car into an alleyway before he could see me, I quickly dialed the police. Hello? Yes, please send help. There's a man outside my house that I'm afraid of. He's been following me and trying to abduct me. I gave them the address and they promised to be there soon. Looking out of my window, I saw Castro beginning to walk away from my house, his form becoming more and more mysterious in the night. I waited patiently for the police praying that he wouldn't get away before they got here. When they arrived, we looked around the area, but he had vanished as if into thin air. After searching for his car, however, they found something that made my stomach churn. Inside the trunk, the police found women's clothing and bags full of trinkets. The police quickly got a search warrant and searched his house. It was in the news a few days later. Several young women had been held captive in his house for years. I couldn't believe I had nearly fallen victim to a serial abductor. I shivered at the thought of how close I had become to being one of those poor girls, never seeing the light of day again. I've learned my lesson. Anyone who thinks that these abductions don't happen is foolish. 
You need to be aware of your surroundings, and you need to be careful of who you trust. That's something I will never forget. Even if you think you know someone, be cautious. It could save your life. The story you just saw is based on the true, terrifying story of Ariel Castro. Whoa. Ariel Castro was a serial killer who kidnapped three girls between 2002 and 2004. These three girls were held hostage in his house until 2013 when they escaped. During this time, one of the women had a daughter. Castro kidnapped these women by inviting them for drives and then kidnapping them. After being caught, Castro was sent to 1,000 years in prison without the possibility of parole. Good riddance. What is the strangest thing that has happened to you in a McDonald's? Surely everyone will tell you that they found a bug in their food, or that they saw a fight. But what I experienced was much, much worse. This happened to me while I was cleaning the McDonald's Oh, I think we've already line. seen this one. Have we already watched this one? As usual, the only thing on my mind was thinking about going home as soon as possible. While I was lost in thought, I began to hear footsteps approaching me. It didn't sound like the footsteps of a customer or a friend leaving with their food. They were the halting and furtive footsteps of someone stalking me. Those footsteps were coming from behind me, and they stopped the moment I turned around. I could vaguely make out someone hiding in the shadows. Did they want to rob me? Who's there? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I think we have watched this one before. It's a different thing. That's the problem with these big compilations. After school, I worked there to save up money before moving out. For me, I still work at McDonald's. But never again will I agree to work the night shift. These are the actual mugshots of Sanda Suarez, who entered a McDonald's on approximately March 24th, 2014, wearing only underwear. After destroying the premises, security restrained her while she was eating ice cream. Sandra had no recollection of what happened and attributes it to her having multiple personality disorder. I've been managing my uncle's gas station for a while now. I started as a part-time worker. After school, I worked there to save up money before moving out. I didn't have many friends because of my workaholic schedule. But one thing even I knew was that it was best to stay away from the Prickly sisters. Gina and Betty Prickly were siblings and came to me with money. All those girls cared about was clicking their pictures and posting them on Instagram. They always wore tight clothes and had lots and lots of makeup caked on their faces. When they walked side by side on their high heels, they made boys' heads turn. One night, I was working in the gas station I stocking mean, the shelves. I mean, it's hard to miss them. And I heard a squeaky voice <laughs> in much. my ear. Hi, Robbie. Ah! Jeez! <laughs> Silly. I turned around and it was the Prickly Sisters. I could never remember which one was Gina and which was Betty, so I addressed them as... Hi, guys. You need anything? They both were staring weirdly at me. One looks like a member of a They had large wads of bubblegum in their mouths and they kept chewing like freaks. Um, hello? You should be glad that we came to your crabby shop, Robbie. Do you even know how many followers we have? <sighs> don't know, don't care. Here it comes. This is why people avoid them. I couldn't care less, so I got a little rude. Look, man, if you want something, help yourself, or don't waste my time. What did you just say? Chicken. We are wasting your time? Meow. What the hell are you even worth? You useless piece of... Look, if you're not leaving, I'm calling the cops! They stopped screaming and then suddenly Meow. did something strange. Meow. Dumb witches started clicking selfies with me. I was bombarded by clicks and their stupid poses. Their shiny fingernails kept clicking while they both squeezed me between them. Before leaving, they both looked at me one last time and grinned. The next day when I got to school, everyone was laughing at me. Suddenly, I was tagged in my Instagram. Once I opened it, my jaw dropped. The Prickly Sisters tagged me in a selfie from my gas station last night. They had morphed my image into a woman and the tagline read, 
It's time to come out of your closet, Robbie. Cheeto, if hell? you don't stop, I'm gonna spreading squish rumors you, about little me, buddy. Trying to portray me as someone I'm not. I stormed into class and saw them giggling amongst themselves looking at their phone. Hey, you! What the hell was all that? What are you talking about, Robbie? We just wanted to help you. Don't be afraid of what people say. Yeah, I mean, now it makes sense why you never flirted with us. The two hottest bombshells. <laughs> Come out of your closet now. They taunted me and humiliated me in front of everyone. My brain couldn't take it anymore. I clenched both of their hair in anger. You freak! This is... But as I pulled, I realized... Oh, they bald. Wigs. Their hairless skulls saw the light of day in front of the entire school. Their prank backfired. Ah! You piece of... Give us our hair back! The that ain't your hair. The their wigs from my hands and ran screaming. Everyone was laughing at them, and even though I felt bad, I told myself they had it coming. For the next three days, the prickly sisters were to be seen. I thought the embarrassment from school had straightened them up, but... God... I was so wrong. I went home after work one night when it started try to kill heavily. Him. I wasn't carrying my umbrella, so I chose the shortcut home. The path went through the woods and coupled with rain. They're gonna kill the him. It was pretty sketchy at that hour. Suddenly, I heard splashes behind me. I turned oh, around, aiming the flashlight of my phone, and there they were. The prickly sisters, standing behind me in the rain. They looked horrible. All the makeup was smeared on their faces as it endured the rain. How long had they been following me? They weren't wearing their wigs, which made them look even more bewildering. Going home, Robbie? Yep, yeah. he's done. I felt my voice break a little. The sisters started slowly approaching me. I too began backing up. Look, what happened between us? Can we just forget about that? You want to forget everything, Robbie? Wouldn't that be nice for you, huh? Because you don't have followers to be bothered about. Do you know that the students clicked our wigless pictures that day? And now our followers are leaving us because you made us look ugly! Hatred and anger You were always ugly. Eyes. We won't let you forget, Robbie! We won't! Ah! They screamed and started running You're just running ugly at me. on the inside. I too was startled and rushed to the opposite direction. I couldn't see where I was going in the rain, but all I wanted to do was to leave them behind. After running for 20 minutes straight, I reached home. I bumped into the door, not being able to control my body. The next day, I didn't go to school or the gas station thinking they would again torment me. But that night, when I turned on the news, I saw something horrible. There had been a report of a car smashing into our store. The footage the cops shared showed a big black van coming directly towards the gas station at full speed, hitting a passing car and then smashing into the store. Two girls got out of the car immediately after the crash, and they were none other than Gina and Betty. Both were overly dressed and unharmed by the accident. They barely seemed to care about what they had done and no remorse could be seen in their body language. They just walked away leaving the scene of the accident. This was the last time I saw those nut jobs. My uncle received insurance for the damage, but the cops couldn't locate the girls. Oh people my in my gosh. family think people the girls like that the are weren't so the friendly sisters. But I'm sure they did it to take their revenge. So Gina and Betty, if you two are watching this. I know it was you two witches who crashed into my uncle's gas station that night. I hope you burn in hell. The above story is based on the footage collected from a gas station in Los Angeles. In the security what? camera footage, a car can what? be seen approaching the gas Cheater. station at very high speed. It slams Cheater. into a minivan and skids, Why crashing so into the gas station. Moments later, two women come out of the car and try to restart it. When they couldn't restart the car, they simply Eesh. walk away, leaving the damaged vehicle behind. The incident and the video footage seem very bizarre as the women appear less bothered by the damage they had caused. There have been no reports on this accident and those two women were never caught as well. Hey guys, my name is Owen. Although I was born and lived Come my here, whole Gina. life in the United States, my parents are from Senegal. To tell you the truth, Come I'm here. proud of my roots, but you have no idea how that affects my life especially because of my skin color. 
But what I'm about to tell you is a separate point. That was the day I met the wrong person in the wrong place. He may be a human, but through my eyes, he's a monster. A monster as despicable and hideous as any horror movie you've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, a lot of people who've done scary things <laughs> go out there. It all started on a normal day. It was a Friday night, and I had just left work to go see my girlfriend in the hospital. The building was not in the best condition. And to make matters worse, my girlfriend was on a floor with very few people. The only person around was an old woman and a strange man. And that's when it all started. That strange man kept looking at me. He was sitting next to a room, but when a nurse came in to change the sheets, I could see that the room was empty. The strangest thing is that this person did not hide the fact that he was looking at me. Many times I get hateful looks because of my skin color, but this was different. The man felt me even greeted me. When I left my girlfriend's room, I noticed that the man was still sitting in the same position, but when he saw me leaving, he stood up and started to follow me. I got some oh, distance from him it. and took out my cell phone to make sure he was following me, and at that moment, I confirmed my suspicion. The terrifying man stood behind me, staring at me. He didn't walk. He didn't say anything. He didn't threaten me. He just looked at me. When he realized I was filming him, he started walking quickly in my direction. I tried to move away as fast as I could, but when I realized, he was running with his tetric and horrifying smile. I rushed to the elevator and pushed it as fast as I could. As the elevator doors tried to close, the man stopped running and just looked in the direction of my girlfriend's room and back at me, Oh, waving. that's bad. How had I not noticed? My girlfriend is still there. Once the elevator arrived, I went back to the seventh floor and ran to her room. The old lady was still there, which calmed me down a bit, especially since there was no sign of the psycho. Maybe she came downstairs to find me on the first floor. I went into my girlfriend's room, and she was sleeping. I didn't want to disturb her, so I went back out. Once I left the room, I felt a needle in my arm, and oh, suddenly everything started to look strange. I could make out the man next to me, who had a syringe. I fell to the floor, dizzy, and Bargain the man began to drag time. me into a room. I noticed that I was not fainting. I just felt very weak, and my body was not responding to me. My vision balanced, and the man greeted me again. But when he opened his mouth to tell me something, I noticed something. He had no tongue. <laughs> Don't blame him. You wouldn't be very sane either if you'd had a lobotomy. That voice. A lobotomy? Next to the man, another silhouette became more prominent. Blech. It was the old woman. The woman had taken off her chin strap and glasses. She was absolutely scary. Even worse than the stalker. Mm -hmm. Don't try to talk, kid. It will be impossible. Bobo injected you with Grandma's prescription. What a perfect body you have. This is superiority. I envy your skin, your body, and your genes. How can you mistreat them like that? You crazy racist. What are you saying? Me? Racist? You should be grateful. Can't you see how I'm envying you? I'm trapped in this rotting old shell, but you... Soon, I will have all this. As if these words were in order, the stalker pulled out a small knife and slowly approached my face, brushing the edge of the knife across it. What do you want to do? Oh, isn't it obvious? The knife came closer and closer to my face. No, no, this no. man was about to skin me, and there was nothing I could do. I was very weak, but I had to try and defend myself. Before I could get my strength up and try to attack the man, the doors of the room opened and we all turned around. A figure attacked the lady with a crutch. It was my His girlfriend. girlfriend! Leave my boyfriend alone, you crazy witch! The old lady had fallen, but the man was still in front of her. Do you think I didn't see you following my boyfriend? Do you think I didn't hear the old woman tell you to take him away? I won't let you do anything to him! 
My girlfriend attacked the psycho, but he didn't feel a thing. He just smiled at her. I'll be fine! Run away! Limping, my girlfriend tried to escape as best she could, but the psycho began to follow her. I threw myself at her feet and held them, but with a kick, he kicked me away and walked no, closer no, toward no. her. My girlfriend ran away limping as best she could, but the psycho was getting closer and closer to her. I was crawling behind them down the same hallway where I had gotten on the elevator before, but this time the elevator wasn't there. There was no way my girlfriend could escape. Just heck? as the man was about to catch her, the elevator doors opened, and out came three men dressed as security, what who the quickly heck? grabbed the psycho while my girlfriend breathed a sigh of relief. I thought it was all over, but suddenly the old lady oh, no. lunged at me with the knife. This time, she didn't want to rip my skin off. She just wanted to kill me. I had a little more energy, and I was able to match her strength. That was the only thing that saved my life, since his knife was going straight for my neck. I was still very weak, and the lady's strength was starting to get the better of me, but I held on long enough for another of the security men to pull the knife out of her. Ugh. A short time later, safe and sound, the security guards told us how the hallway had cameras, and even though they missed me due to inattention, they were able to see my girlfriend open the door to attack the old lady, and arrived in time, before everything got even more complicated. Over time, I learned that my attackers were dedicated to kidnapping black men and extracting their skin and organs. As they said, they were superior. I still remember this lady and how I could not understand in court how her thinking was racist and psychotic, and that she is only one person among millions who, to a lesser extent, act in a similar way. The only thing that leaves me with some peace of mind is that, at least this time, these people will be locked up for good. This time, justice was done. That's sad. On February 19th, 2018, Chris Simpson was returning from visiting his girlfriend in the hospital when he had noticed a man following him. In this real footage, we will see how, even for a brief moment, Chris manages to expose him. I feel bad for that guy. I'm not gonna lie. When I agreed to work at Popeye's Fried Chicken, I was aware of what I was getting into. I know oh, the place doesn't have the best shoot. reputation, but I needed... It's really late. Alright, I'm gonna cut it here. Uh, thank you for joining me for Spooky Scary Saturdays. We'll probably finish this up on next Saturday so we'll uh, save it to the watch later yep 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 we'll finish that next time uh, this has been Penelope possuming it up all you possums, stay awesome. And it's been fun hanging out and around with you guys. But I gotta go play possum and eat some food. Till next time. Bye. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment.